Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Josh, and you are tuning in to the podcast, Just a Kid from Gary, a podcast that highlight individuals that grew up in cities, uh, in Gary or cities like Gary, and now are doing amazing things. And today I have a really exciting episode for everyone. This is something that um, it kind of been in the, 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 the pipeline as far as just getting everything worked out, and I really love how it came together. But I'm excited about this one because as uh, with a, a, a very outstanding, um, uh, I'll call him a young man, <laughs> uh, but I am here with David Supple, the CEO of NE Design and Construction located in Boston, Massachusetts. David, how are you? I'm doing great, Josh. Thank you for uh, having me on your podcast. It's an it's a honor and a privilege. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm excited about this one. Um, I think you know, on our phone co- phone conversation, um, there was a level of synergy that I yeah. kind of, I, not kind of, I really enjoyed. And I know that um, just based off what you're doing, um, just to kind of get into it, you know, um, David here, he's been a part of uh, the the, Mass- the Boston, Massachusetts uh, community and has been doing a lot of cool things. Um, he is basically uh, known for this motto, lifting spirits with uh, spaces and is also currently um, involved within multiple articles, which I think he's going to be writing a book pretty soon. And I'm going to be very, very excited to read that, but called the Black, or is it, I want to be sure it's the Black Influence in Architecture and Building Mastery. Is that the name or that's just well, that, over our That was the article that I wrote and it will certainly be part of the book. Okay. Um, the so book it'll is fit real, in there. Yeah, yeah, it will be. It, it's, it's a prime example of the book, which the book is really to bring people the truth about, you know, an industry we share, which is the building, you know, the, the industry that creates the built environment. And uh, there's a lot of lies revolving around that industry. And so the, 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 the book's purpose is to bring the truth and enlighten people on, you know, the real deal and the truth and, you know, what they don't teach you in school. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I was reading the uh, the article, and I think probably the most um, influential part for me, um, I, I one I want to say that I really like how you made more of inflammatory statements, um, kind of like calling claim to the issues that were happening. Yeah. Um, Thank and, you. And even looking at like why, like why we've been so subtle about it. And, right. um, and as, as black, like as, as, as black designers and even minority designers, what we can be doing in order to change that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you take it away, man. Cool. Like kind of get into the concept of like, like why you, why, like what motivated you to this point, yeah. why you did the research and, and yeah. just kind of build that story for us. I'll give you the short, shorter version, but I'm from, uh, I'm actually from Norwalk, Connecticut, which is a suburb of New York city. And I, uh, my folks are from New York city and, um, my name is actually David Muniz supple. My, my mother's Puerto Rican. That's her maiden name. Okay. My dad is Irish. That's supple. Yep. (laughs) And, uh, so, so I grew up in Norwalk, Connecticut and I went to school in Boston, uh, for architecture and I basically stuck around and, um, you know, what inspired me to, to be an architect. That's why I wanted that's what I went to school for was really just the impact that I, that I was aware of that one's environment could have on one, you know, Mm -hmm. it could, it could uplift you. It could dictate, you know, how you felt and inspire you. And so I wanted to create that in others. And I went to school. I did the, you know, I did the degree. I got out, I started practicing as an architect and basically I realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Right. Um, and I, I equate it to this. It's like going to school to be a chef, but you never cooked anything in your life. The whole freaking four years you were in the school, all you did was theoretically learn how to write recipes. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that would be the closest uh, analogy I can give to my education. So when I started, you know, practicing, uh, you know, sometimes it's just lines on pieces of paper. Like I didn't really know what it was. I felt very deficient because my job was actually to tell people what to build and how to build it. Mm -hmm. Right. But I never done that in my life. So how, what I was very insecure. So 
essentially I, um, I, I, you know, I, I worked as a carpenter to fill that void because I, I knew I didn't want to keep pretending. And then, um, I kind of like, I've just been exploring this industry specifically. And, um, what I found was that is the, the derivation of the word architect. This is kind of the, the first piece of truth I got that set me on this path with the derivation of the word architect is master builder. So if you break it down, it's good. It's this Greek and it's archi, which is chief or master. And then, tecton which is builder is and so it's basically and then you start looking at history and up until about a hundred years ago the the builder was the architect these words were synonymous you look in a dictionary you go back a hundred years you look in a dictionary the words use each other are def like they define each other using the same words and it's really been made to appear that they've always been separated and it's totally normal and that's because it's taught in these prestigious universities that have the appearance of being there forever, but it's, it's really not true. And um, the, the profession of architecture was really an elitist, uh, you know, uh, exclusive group. They were created because coming out of America was a colony of England. And the English have very much of this social status structure. There was a gentleman. There was this thing called a gentleman. And a gentleman wasn't just a nice guy. It was like in their census. Like you could be, that was your, your occupation or your title was a gentleman. And part of the definition of a gentleman is you could not do physical labor. Okay? If you did manual labor, you could never be a gentleman. So basically, you know, the mid-1800s, there was these builders who were the best builders and they couldn't get on par with their clients. They wanted to be considered an architect or a lawyer, a professional, a gentleman. And the way they did this was by creating this exclusive group. They, they created the American Institute of Architects in uh, 1857, um, around the time of the Civil War. And they created this group to raise their social status that was the only that was the play like stated that was their stated purpose and so uh what kind of where this ties into in regards to the black community is this there were white guys and <laughs> these white guys wanted to separate themselves from anything that could be conceived as not like not right upper class or wh whatever you know so that included the trades that included black people. The, the first, one of the things I, I talk about in this article is uh, the first uh, black member of the American Institute of Architects did not, um, was, ne was not admitted until like 60 years after the end of the Civil War. So 60 years after the abolition of slavery, you know, this group did not admit and, 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 you know, and, and so it's telling, you know, and that, and this whole profession, it was built on, it's not a good purpose. It's, it was built, it was, it was built to like separate, right? But, you know, it just so happens that that's not effective. And, and those guys who created the organization did very well because they created a monopoly and they knew how to build. So they were good, but then it got into the universities. The universities real, made it really theoretical. And then you have these cycles of like generational cycles where the, you know, you know, architects knew a little less about building, little less about what things cost, a little bit less. And then you had this situation where it got to me and maybe you, where you get out of school and you're like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, I, you know, it's, it, so it's, it's like a, a messed up situation and um the article i wrote was on tuskegee alabama and in uh, uh booker t washington and i'm if it's cool with you i'm gonna share yeah that's fine this. i was hoping that that you did that by the way i had muted just so everyone know i just muted my my uh my uh audio while you were talking i had uh, some background noise so i just want that to be clear but yeah 
we're, we're good. You, you're good. Okay. So this is uh, – so, so Booker T. Washington, it's Booker T. He started this school in uh, 1881 in Tuskegee, Alabama. And um, he always had um, taught uh, design and building. And basically the thing that this school needs to be credited with and the real purpose is this was the first design build curriculum in America. And it was incredible, incredible. Like the students would um, learn architecture, design, and then they would actually go build, build. Uh, what they had designed. So they were getting both the theory and the practical. Today, there's over a hundred uh, design build programs in American universities. But this, th th this is like omitted hmm. from the history books. But it is the best, most stellar example I have ever seen on a curriculum. Like these guys and gals, because they did admit females, were you know some of the most competent, incredible, um, you know, architects builders that were ever uh, you know produced, and and it really needs to be duplicated because it is lacking in today's society. And um, it's really an incredible, incredible example that needs to be, you know, given the praise and esteem that that it deserves. Right. I, I think that, like, first off, the history of architecture is is something that um, within our country we have to look at, or the I just say the United States of America, we have to look at. It it ha it has held uh, a level of 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 discrimination uh, yeah. of racial discrimination. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's interesting how uh, you you brought this concept to where it was it was to be more of this um, a higher prestige uh, uh, practice, which it, it made a clear difference between black and white between. Yeah. You know, saying those who were enslaved and those who were uh, free, and if you think about it, uh, if 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 and this, and I, I remember us being on a phone call and us talking about it, but I addressed even how um, in our world that has been built, and if you think about it strongly, the, if white people came up with this concept, then their concept was strongly to build for a white world. So it yes. wasn't to build with black intent. It was for a white world. So as black designers, minority designers, or just designers in general, you know, we have to really challenge history and say, okay, guys, what did we do wrong? <laughs> um, and even to the level of the situations that we have even going on today, I sometimes discredit or credit, excuse me, architecture from the past i look at architecture and urban planning because we could look at and i know you had mentioned this but what do you mean discredit uh so basically what what i mean is we can we 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 have to we have to say that um the architecture and planning that was done might have not been the best for our communities and and are some of result of what we go through today <laughs> And yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was yeah, gonna, I was yeah. gonna look at, I was just gonna analyze just the zoning behind it, and then I'll let yeah. you have the floor, because zoning is so influential because zoning is what created those, you know, what I'm saying different areas. Where totally, people, yeah. I mean, go ahead, it go. makes a lot of sense, and I, I didn't ever really think about it until we spoke. Mm -hmm. I knew about the exclusivity in terms of that was their purpose. Yeah. I knew they didn't want anything to do with black people and they wanted to distance themselves for 60 freaking years. Years. Yeah. This is absolutely ridiculous. And that, that first uh, fellow who they admitted that was like the Michael Jordan of architecture at the mm -hmm. time. Like mm -hmm. they couldn't have not admitted him. Right. And I, I've never, I want to know when the second person was second black person was admitted. Mm -hmm. Because I bet you, my my theory, it was there was it was another ten years. Or it was so. probably like a crazy gap. Yeah, I I'm telling you, I yeah. think it was. And the AIA needs to come out and own it. Yeah. Because you know, 
you know, they just need to own it. They need to take responsibility for it. But w just to go back on this, Please. What, what started clicking for me when you mentioned that was, okay, good. So I knew that was their purpose, right? And then mm -hmm. one of the first things they did was they got it into universities, like big universities, like yeah. MIT. Mm -hmm. MIT was the first university the AIA brought their architectural uh, program into. Mm -hmm. And so then if you start thinking about it, okay, good. So then, who, you know, these urban planners, it's really, you know, um, an offspring of the architecture world like oh, they're in the same building oh absolutely you know what i'm saying so oh absolutely good. so now these urban planners they go out and they create the zoning and if anybody doesn't know what zoning is so every town or city is broken up into zones and that zone uh they is uh there's code laws yeah. on what can be built there yes you know and and basically they control you know, it's industrial, residential, commercial, nice residential, not so nice yep. residential, mm -hmm. and they make it harder to build in some areas. So, and not, and, and, um, and to even put more emphasis on it, they know they use these zoning maps and zoning um, um, schedules and to say, hey, banks, this is where you should give the money to. So, even if, say, for example, you're not even in that zoning area where uh you you want you want to get to want to get to uh, a loan in order to invest into your business or if you want to you know uh, remodel your house in some areas you not you're not even allowed to get those types of loans so like there like this was truly i mean we we all understand that as as uh, um redlining but it, it's it's a real problem and i think that i i really enjoy the fact that you are addressing it um but please continue please continue with your thought yeah i mean and i don't i don't really think i mean maybe your audience is but in terms of like white folk i don't really think they are so aware of it That's because true. it's not taught in school it's, it's not, not, it's it, not. It, 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 you, you, you you can be blind you can be like ignorant and you don't even know you mm -hmm. actually are beyond ignorant because you think it's totally normal and fine and it's it's like uh, but if you just look at it, I think that's the telling thing. If you just look at the, the group's purpose. Right. And then what, you know, what would the inevitable outcome be? Right. Is if their purpose was to raise their social status and like theirs, mm -hmm. theirs. It mm -hmm. wasn't the greater good. No. That wasn't their stated purpose. Mm. So, you know, what would be the outcome? It would, it would lead to things like, you know, um, like you're talking about. And part of the amazing thing about this story is that um, the first African um, American graduate of MIT mm -hmm. went to Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. And his, this guy was his, uh, his father. This is him, uh, Robert Taylor. Yes. His father was a, a freed slave, was a builder. And so he was a trained carpenter builder before he went to MIT. And mm. then he was the valedictorian of, uh, of his class, incredible individual. And then he came back and really um, enhanced what Booker T. Washington had established at Tuskegee and just brought it to another level. Interesting. And they, they were prolific in terms of, you know, his students would build design. You know, he would be the lead designer, but they would build all these buildings. And the campus was largely constructed by the students. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's an incredible story, but that guy came from MIT. I mean, mm -hmm. just think about the, the adversity and odds that, uh, you know, he had to, to go through at that time. And, um, and, but this, they created really like a haven. And this um, university is still the largest per, um, I, I'm gonna talk about this book a little bit, but I highly For recommend sure. Melvin Mitchell. Um, it's the uh, uh, largest um, community or largest largest group of buildings built, designed and built by um, uh, uh, by a black group, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and I think that I think they and, and let's let's really just talk about in specific like the dynamics of Tuskegee. For example, their design build program had I think you had stated over twenty five different uh, separate degrees where it extended from like brickland to like, i think carpentry and all this other yeah. thing so it, it really taught the architect how to truly 
like design it. And I'll tell you the biggest, the biggest problem that I have today. I'll tell you the biggest problem that, that when I'm in the firm, when I'm in the field, or when I'm just like at the computer designing, the biggest problem I have today is getting my brain wrapped around a, I'm, I'm looking at a 2D or 3D screen, but I have to get my brain wrapped around it. And I think that that part was so significant because if I put it together, well, then I know how to build it. I can yeah. build it in my head before I uh, even get it to paper. So yeah, I think that, yeah. that those, are, those are just disconnects that I think that more of us, and trust me, it's just not me. I'm talking to a lot of guys that are having this, a lot of girls and guys, excuse me, that are having the same problem. So talk about that a little bit. Like, like yeah. how dynamic was that? And, and how did you see that being dynamic for you? Well, for me, I mean, I, I, I was like, this is, I got out of school. I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> like I had been inspired by looking at these uh, incredible buildings that mm -hmm. you see from history. Right. Yeah. And I was nowhere near like I, I could, I could maybe draw the building. I couldn't do anything in terms of like putting it together. I was inept. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that is the current state of the way it, an architect is trained by and large. I mean, I, it's a generality, so it's not, you know, it's not true everywhere maybe, but by and large, uh, that is the truth. And um, it's really just an outcrop from the fact that, like I said, like these guys just wanted to separate themselves mm -hmm. and um, they weren't looking out into the future. They were looking out short term, like their gain. And they weren't, you know, they didn't really think things through that well because, um, you know, what we have here today in the industry, it's not great. Like the architect is not a great profession. Like I've done, I, I post this stuff about uh, the average time it takes to get licensed is something like uh, almost 13 years mm -hmm. between uh, like the start of, uh, start of school. college mm -hmm. to like licensure, you th you're in it for 13 years. And the average median income is like, I think it's under 80 K, mm -hmm. which, okay, that's, Okay, that's fine. But depending on what area you live in too, though. Yeah, but then compare it to a lawyer and a doctor because it's a comparable, because a doctor is actually, it's like 10.7 years. So it's less years and the average income is like 250K. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, a lawyer is like seven years and it's like, you know, 180 or something. But mm -hmm. it, they didn't, it didn't work out so well for architects. No. And what I see is that, uh, and what, what, you know, Mel, Mr. Mitchell talks about here a little bit is, um, you know, that's kind of not the right path to go down necessarily. I'm not saying don't be an architect, but the product is the building. The product is the building. The product is not the plans or, or like you can't, what you can do, the purpose of plans is to build. It's like the purpose of a recipe is to cook. Mm -hmm. So if you can't cook, you know, what kind of chef are, are you really going to be? So that's true. Um, I mean, that's a, that's no matter what, you know, ethnic background you have, like, that's just a truth. And that's, you know, for me, that's like my purpose in life is to like bring the truth and in doing so, you know, it's going to improve our buildings, which improve our environment. Sure, and it's sure. a powerful thing. Um, but what, what I really hope happens is that, you know, by and large, this story inspires folks and especially the black community, because um, this is the legacy left. Like mm -hmm. this is the truth. This happened, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's only right that the, the black community today champions that and is you know, uh, the example of actually like the product of competency mm -hmm. in terms of the built environment. And, um, and in doing so, you know, being going to be able to control more so the, you know, the economic uh, viability of their community. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And so Let me, uh, I'm going to take our screen back to um, just for right now, if, or do you mind doing that? Yeah, too? yeah. Let me let me because that's back on your Sorry. side. But I wanted to um, I wanted to address that. 
And I want to hit that one a little bit harder because for my audience, I'll, I'll be very transparent. One thing that is more relevant than anything or prevalent than anything is establishing economic value within our community through designing and through building. Um, I feel like it's so important that we take back that responsibility within our own community because I think you mentioned something, but architecture is dying. Like the architect concept is dying. Yeah. And the reason why is because, like you said, how it was established, how it was built, um, yeah. who who started it and why they started yeah. it. If they and, and because they built it on that concept of just being elitist and not truly helping people, then we see that literally a hundred some years later, excuse me, more than a hundred years later, uh, 150 plus years later, we're able to see this kind of crash in this, in this, in this system. And so um, I, one thing for our, the audience to realize is that, you know, economic value um, within building is really, really important. I talk about how to build that economic value. So for example, like if, if people are able to um, 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 find loans and, 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 and build their own, um, communities, you know, starting yeah. there, um, yeah. how, how to pl make those placemakers for everything that they need, you know, right there in the heart of the city, what do they need? And I think that, you know what I'm saying? Um, you had a little bit of involvement or not even a little bit, a lot of involvement, but just recently, uh, you were involved with, um, helping, uh, doing some pro bono work for, uh, some companies that had, um, yeah. were, were basically, basically victims of, of the police. Uh, not, it wasn't yeah. police brutality. It was basically after the, uh, yeah, the damage. There was some, some shops were, vent, vent, you know, you know, had some damage done. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, I mean, that that's incredible. I, I mean, just for me, my awareness, you know, I consider myself, I'm, I'm, I'm half Puerto Rican, but I'm really like, look like a white guy i'm a, like mm -hmm. treated like a white guy mm -hmm. and i'm kind of like a white guy right mm -hmm. <laughs> so my awareness i don't know if it's if i haven't been looking and now i'm just like it's fucking it's like you can't right there you can't face. hide it's like yeah. videoed and so you're yeah. just like holy shit you know but um i just can't get over it. it is absolutely incredible and um and so, yeah, after, after those, uh, after, you know, we just wanted to do something and we, there was a few businesses that, um, have been, uh, have been, you know, some, some damage done and we, we did some work for them to, to help with their, um, you know, to help, uh, get them back on, on track and what have you. So, but it was just a small, small token and those businesses were incredible. You know, they were black mm -hmm. owned businesses and they were uh very supportive uh you know of the movement and to bring awareness and they you know they just use it as an opportunity to bring more awareness mm -hmm. um to um you know to improving things so but see dave was, i think you said something that was really important you know yes you're right a lot of times as white people you could probably see something or don't see something and a lot of times you just like maybe it's just not just because I, I went we, I went to a PWI for example they you know most white kids didn't realize certain things or of black culture or just issues that were happening until they were right there in the face of it and I think that's just yeah. the uncomfortable truth it's just like yeah. man like, you guys are just not sh like you, you're you're sheltered you're, you're not shown yeah, not living what's it. happening not I living grew it. up in a city literally where like I seen both sides of it and and I would ask myself questions every single day like hey why is this happening? Why nobody creating solutions behind it? And then when I get yeah. to school, I realize, oh, like we could have created solutions, but people really didn't care. They were overlooking these things. And so like, I even think, think about it like when people say they drive by like a city, for example, I, and I'll use my city because my audience are, are, are more aware. They'll say, okay, yeah, I, I drove by Gary and it, it looked this way and it, was, it felt this way. And, and basically it made me feel like it was a city of crime or or a city of, of, of low investment and low economic value and all this stuff. And, and when you really think about it, you go, well, you super sheltered because that's what people have to live with every single day. Mm. But see, that's just something you just like analyze, you look at, you might even laugh about, but the seriousness of the fact that, you know, people are going through that. So right. I, I think that it's something that we have to continue to do. We got to clear yeah. our lands and allow 
you know, that to be, you know, um, um, transparent. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I need to do more. I mean, it's really the, the, the silver lining I think is the increase in awareness because that is the solution. You know, it is, it is people need to wake up to what's actually happening. And, and if more people become aware, you know, the truth, truth is powerful. And, and, uh, that, that is going to elicit change. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to trying to do do my part to get back to uh, 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 something I want to talk about. Um, this motto that I, I I seen you said, lifting spirits with spaces. I want to talk more about that. Um, first, where did it come from? I just thought of it. I guess you know. Um, I always had you know part of the purpose was to enhance our clients' lives. And I always, um, I always kind of saw that it is true. Like the potential for improving somebody's life was there by the space that they occupied. And then um, it kind of sounds good. So that's how, that's basically how it came about lifting spirits with spaces. Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. I mean, that's kind of our rallying cry. You know, it, when I, I talk to my team every day, I'm like, hey, let's do a great job so that people lives are improved. And it, so it's not just, you know, a, it's not, that's our, it's not just a job, you know, it's our, it's our, it's our contribution to society. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it's, it's powerful, you know, because uh, it's a strong purpose. It's not just to do your nine to five, check in, check out. It's like, you know, to create an impact. And, um, and so, you know, the, and we're a relatively small company. I mean, we're, we're like, there's 15, 20 of us. We do, we're going to do like, you know, uh, like six and a half million this year, but that's a P drop compared to, um, you know, these large scale developments. And really that's where I do want to go because, you know, the, the, the bigger you can um, build, you know, the, the greater good you can affect. Yeah, Um, absolutely. And so, um, you know, I think that's why just this potential, I mean, if you look at that lifting spirits with spaces, you know, on a greater scale, it has the potential to do a lot of good, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, through the built environment. And, um, and so, yeah, I think it's a powerful thing. That's dope, man. I think that, uh, when you were even talking, I realized that, um, with having a smaller firm and, and and kind of like, um, really trying to grow your firm to, to the place that you, that you want it to be. Uh, I, I looked at how important it is to really just like care about the community and then use your influence and your platform, which is you're a business owner, you are a designer, you're in the field of architecture and how you use that um, to influence. You know, quite frankly, I don't think it's enough of people out there doing that, uh, using their instruments. When I talk to um, some of the people around me, they, some of the things that they realize even in projects, and I think this is a, a big thing we need to talk about, is even in projects, we're not going after the ones that matter. Like we're not going after the ones that could change a community life. You know, it's still the influence of, you know, and the, but any great business owner obviously is gonna, we gotta pay the bills, people gotta eat, you know, employees gotta eat. but um being conscious of those 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 communities you know what can we do you know uh, who can we be talking with in order to enrich those communities and so i think lifting spirits with spaces i think has a real good um motto and a good sound to it just because i believe that's how we should be thinking as designers you know how can we increase the vibration of everyone within this community you had brought up um, some pictures before. Um, yeah. And you and I were talking about these. Um, and, and we were kind of looking at the European uh, architecture and things of like that. And I really want to dive into that. And I'm a, yeah. I want to allow, allow you to have your, your space because I, I feel like that was just an interesting conversation to have. Yeah. I, and uh, you, you, you had some stuff on that that I was not aware of. Yeah. And uh, 
So it'd yeah. be great to hear, hear, you know, bring that. Sure. Again. Sure. Uh, Josh, give me one second. I'm gonna. Sure. I'm gonna take your time. We'll we'll take a break and then we'll. we'll I'm I'm gonna regulate. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my the screen, do the screen share again, and um, so this is pretty wild. So you know, I went to school for four years for architecture. I took a lot of architectural history courses, a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm pretty sure. I wasn't just sleep sleeping through them, uh, but th this again, I really high, highly recommend this book. This is he 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 he's the one who um, mm -hmm. points this out. So this is the Parthenon. This is in uh, Athens, Greece. Greece. This is like 500 BC. Yes. Okay. Very. You know, a lot of folks have seen this building before. Okay. Uh, 500 BC. This is uh, Rome. A lot of these buildings are older. Like that's this is the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is but like this right here is like uh, 300 BC. Okay. Now, this mm -hmm. is like 1500 mm -hmm. plus BC. This is in Africa. Okay. Yep. Th this is. Uh, 2500 bc no 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 no. i uh, correct me i'm uh, you know what first off this this i think is 2500 this yes. is 3500 35 yeah bc mm -hmm. okay the comparable on that is like like this is just the parthenon that distance it's like it's like us today versus the parthenon yeah okay versus the parthenon to this like it's the same amount of time it's like two thousand years mm -hmm. okay now i've never seen this before this is gotcha. in africa okay yes like you can't tell me that um this is also same same time period okay you can't tell me that these structures did not influence these you just yeah. can't like yeah. like look at the fluted column mm -hmm. This is a mm -hmm. this is a Doric uh, style column. You can't tell me that was not influenced by this, but yet it is omitted omitted from our education. I actually saw uh, just this weekend. I was at a friend's house. They have all right. these books, great library, lots of kid books. They have a they have freaking seven kids. <laughs> there was a book on the pyramids uh, for children. Okay, it, they did not show these pictures. Okay, they show like triangular, like what you think of when you think of a pyramid. Mm -hmm. This is right next to it. This is right next to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty incredible. Um, and it just shows you because like what architecture has become in terms of history is this yeah. and European history and it omits Africa, it omits Asia, it omits yep. South America. Yep. And um and, and not only does it omit it, but it hides it. You know what I mean? You you know, so inter this is probably the most interesting part of of this because as a so me personally, I started doing tons and tons of research. And the fact that you had brought this up was probably the most significant thing that I had ever came across because it validated a lot of the research that I was already doing. And when I had really <laughs> discovered and looked at architecture within like European architecture, I looked at Rome, I looked at Greece, and then I was doing even further history because I started really looking at the pyramids and trying to under understand the pyramids. Why haven't nobody discovered how it was designed, built, the engineers behind it. Why can't people figure it out? And I started thinking, well, these were African people who did it. And I started looking at some of the other, you know, set artifacts and some of the under, other wonders of the world they had created. And I started realizing the same reality that, that you came to is that they look just like what's happening in Greece, what's happening in, in Rome, and even here in America, because we have those colonnades. We have the Washington Monument that looks like the Tanuku in Africa. And yeah. I realized that some way, somewhere in history, something was shaved off, something was st stolen, something was fabricated in order to be a replica of the original. And you yeah. go, okay, did Africa steal from 
Greece <laughs> and, 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 the, and these European uh, countries or did, the, yeah. did it happen vice versa? And one thing that came to me, man, is you said that, for example, the piece that she was looking at in Athens is what, at 500 BC? 500 BC, yep. 500 BC, got you. So one thing that I, I, I took into consideration was during a certain period of time, uh, we know that like Alexander the Greek came in and, 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 and he basically conquered Egypt. So yeah. after conquering Egypt, which it was originally named Kemet, he basically, you know, changed it to Kemet. And, and after that, it was probably like everything basically was stolen. Because, for example, the first doctors, the first brain surgeons, the first philosophers, scientists, architects and engineers, they all were derived from Kemet, all from Egypt. And the okay. fact that and the fact that, you know, say after we see after this this conquest, this conquest that that the Alexander the Greek does, then we start seeing this like robust of like uh, 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 Pythagorean theorem, all these concepts, mm -hmm. all these philosophies, all this art. Yeah. But it derived from a certain place. They didn't yeah. have they like honestly like like Greece wasn't known for a a, a thriving country of art and culture before these you know these conquests. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that that. While they while they took while they took these countries and they conquered these countries, they stole a lot of things. Yeah, I think that the architecture that we realize today and the art that they that we look at today, it was stolen. It, it, I mean, big time. I mean, the pictures don't lie. You they know, don't. That's kind of the that's, you that's know, what the that's the beauty of it. My coach would say the film don't lie, <laughs> exactly. and the pictures don't lie. You can't get away from that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty. I mean. You just can't. And those, those, those pictures are like hidden. You yeah. know what I mean? They're not taught. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, um, it, and it's, it's pretty wild to me because I, I kind of got into all of this because I was digging down this path of like my profession and I yes. knew there was something off on my profession. Right. Yes. And then I started to dig in on like, Oh, who are these guys that created this? And what, you know, what was their deal? And then I was like, okay, good. And you know how it really got messed up was um, when it got into the universities, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's books on the history of the architect, Absolutely. okay? Those books make it seem like it was always separate. Mm -hmm. they, they, they lie, okay? Mm -hmm. And they take things out of context. Like, they'll take a quote from, uh, like, the Greek time, and they'll be like, Bingo. Uh, this guy Vitruvius or whatever, and he'll be like, oh, well, he's, he says that the architect doesn't use his hands. Mm -hmm. He just, and, and then you're like, and, the, and so the, his, the, the guy writing the book will be like, you see, so it's like, it's like it is now. Mm -hmm. But then you go and read his book, like what he was talking about. He was just saying that the architect is the boss. And so he's just directing folks. Mm -hmm. But he came up from the trades he came mm -hmm. up working on with his hands and now he's the boss that's the only reason he doesn't use so they take things out of context but then you look at who wrote these books yeah who commit who published who who published and paid mm -hmm. for those books to be written mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was the it was the universities yep and who and who started those university programs to um who started it was the guys who wanted to be exclusive yeah. and create this exclusivity so then these historians you know, back that up. And they're like, yeah, this is how it was, but it's not, and it's perverted. But then you apply that to like, you know, the, um, the like just black history, mm -hmm. right? Like it, 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 it's part of that because they didn't want, they wanted it to come from Europe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that was them. That was their, it's like a vested interest. Uh, and, and, that's, and it's what, yeah. I mean, it's wild because now it's a bit of a trip for me because you even think of your own education and what you're actually taught. It's exactly, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's under the context of, of, a, of a vested, vested interest. And uh, I mean, it aligns with that article I wrote because that, that piece of history is there yeah. and believe me, that will be modeled. And you're completely right that things are changing in this industry. Mm -hmm. uh, technology alone, is going back to a collaborative, like together approach, yes. whether, whether we want to or not, or not. Yep. because robots are going to be building this shit in uh, the not too distant future. And oh, yeah. that the, the lines between like design and 
construction execution that this is going to be continuous mm -hmm. you know but yeah. um but it's all related you know it's it's the point it's just interesting how i got into it but then you it's very much aligns and brings to light you know this truth that you've been aware of and i think you know you talk about i've been uh, very silent about it only because and one thing that that has really been just kind of the triggering point for me is where do I get frustrated enough to where like, like we have to start really analyzing for what it is, you know, um, history is probably the biggest thing for us. And, and this is one thing I, I tell my audience, do your research, because a lot of it is based off research. So we only have a small glimpse of history. But if we just really do our research, if we're looking at encyclopedias, we're looking at images, we're studying, we're starting to really dig into the artifacts, the truth, what really, really went down and what happened. And it's not to say like all these architects that came up, you know, between then and now are horrible people, but no, no it, not it's not giving the credit to who were the originators, yeah. progenitors yeah. of these concepts. Right. Like for example, right. the, the like, are you familiar with the golden ratio, right? Yes. So I looked at the golden ratio and, you know, it was, it was designed based off of the, the perfect rectangle. Right. Right. And like, and we, and, they, and, and, and the first thing they looked at was like the Greeks and it was like the Greeks basically, you know, they mastered this. But if you look at like, for example, the colon, the colonnades that we were just looking at and, yeah. and some of their, like their architecture that runs along their, uh, I can't think of the, the, the proper name of it, but their roof line, you'll, you'll see that yeah. it mimics African architecture so they weren't the originators of the golden ratio it was africans yeah it's, <laughs> and it's it, it just it's, it's right there in history we just got to really yeah. look at this and so i yeah. think that the most mastering part of everything of this whole design bill is a analyzing the history point but then two we have to give 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 a a point of of um and we have to point the finger. We got to say, hey, guys, you guys messed up somewhere. And like you said, this is a really good point. Um, why aren't we um, or why are we still teaching this in our schools? You know, that that's the next question we got to say, because like you said, a lot of kids don't know this, you know. And when I was in architecture school, if I didn't do my outside research, nobody would have ever talked about this. Nobody yeah. ever would have addressed this. All they would have looked at is like the amazing things that Frank Lloyd Wright did and maybe some amazing zoning uh, 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 or urban planners uh, uh, in between this this space of America being established and where we are today, but nobody really addresses the true history. And yeah, I think that's that's the important part. It's just good. St it's you know, and the truth is the history. If you get get into it and you and you see it, it it is. It, it's like it doesn't lie. Like those pictures don't lie. Like this stuff happened. Yeah, and yeah. so. You know, when you know that and you have certainty on that, it changes your outlook and it changes um, almost your beingness, you know, because yeah. uh, it's a powerful thing. And then if you know, you know, where you where you come from, just in terms of just say we're just talking about this architecture and building. I mean, as a black person, if you know that's where you're, uh, you know, your heritage comes from i mean shit man like walk with that like know that like bingo you know have pride in that and 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 uh champion it and and i think that is a you know that beingness that you know way you hold yourself and walk that's going to carry forward into your actions which then carry forward into what you you produce you and your yeah. result you yeah. know i i literally and, just got uh, off the phone with a buddy of mine sorry to interrupt you I yeah. got off the phone with a buddy of mine who I literally told the same thing to because I, I, I think that it's important for the audience to understand that we do have a very, very rich history. And if we understood the level of excellence that we played at, then a lot of things that we look at as hardship or we look at as we can't do, it would change. Because I'll tell you this, once I learned or once I discovered this, I, I'm telling you, man, the level of confidence that I had was amazing and i realized that i could do anything i realized that what i say mattered i realized that you know so just to, and it's, it's a true level of confidence of what what we know we can do and it's not to like really 
here, here's the truth as black people in America, we have been in this spot where we can't do, we've been made to feel incompetent. We don't have any power. Yeah, but right. if you go say, Hey, Hey, black person, Hey, my me, like, you know what I'm saying? My brothers, my sisters, Hey, real quick. Do you know who you are? Yeah. 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 I, I know I was a slave. No, 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 no. Retract your history further than that. Then you'll yeah. come to this realization. And, but I think that is, it's also your job though, Dave, to continue to tell that story and continue to allow those things to happen. As a white guy, I understand that, you know, you might have some difficulties, but it is your duty once you have this level of knowledge, once you have yeah. this level of understanding. Yeah. So, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm going to, I keep going back to this book um, because. Hold it up again. No. It's the African American uh, Architect. Is, yeah, again. and it's Melvin Mitchell. Melvin Mitchell, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, he talks about, you know, that, like, have the proper example, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of, like, a role model. And, again, I'm just talking about this industry, but what he talks about is how, um, you know, the Tuskegee curriculum, it didn't all really actually continue like that. <laughs> you know, it ended yeah. at some point. And unfortunately, what happened is that uh, these um, these uh, universities like Tuskegee started just getting into, you know, the example of, you know, the like the white universities, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like the AIA, like trying to be like them, yep. where that the actual best example imaginable was uh, was right there. And so um, and. And he talks about how it really didn't lead to a great place, you know? The outcome yeah. wasn't good. Um, and, um, you know, but there are really good examples that are actually rooted in black history that are just the prime, prime examples to duplicate and uh, emblem and, um, you know, just just for me and in and anyone, but especially you know, as a black individual, you know, there is this legacy there to be extremely proud of, and carry forward, and um, you know, create incredible effects, and um, and you know, I I would like to do more. I would like to uh, you know help and, and and do more, and and it's uh, I think um, you know. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it it, it is, and um, I I really appreciate you getting on the platform. Um, even uh, even how we got connected. Um, shout out to Evan, by the way, um, for setting this all up. He was he's yeah. been great um, at this, and you know, moving forward, you know, I want to ask you, what can people do? And this can be kind of our last closing yeah. um, 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 conversation piece. But what can people be doing right now um, to, and based off what you understand, to better influence their communities. Um, I, like I said, I'm from Gary, you're from, Bo um, well, you're not yeah. from Boston, but you live in Boston. Uh, you're actually from uh, uh, New York, but what can we be doing, uh, in your opinion, to influence our communities, to grow them into the places that they, they deserve? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it does start with education, which is what we've been talking about, but what I really believe is that if you're in this industry of the built environment, uh, design build, which is really returning to a collaborative, um, holistic, natural approach is the future. And it is going to continue and continue and continue to gain prominence. And so whatever you are, you know, if you're an architect, if you're a builder, if you're an engineer, if you're, uh, uh, carpenter, tradesperson, um, you know, the industry is there to be collaborative and, and it has an inherent um, process and components that need to be thought with. Mm -hmm. uh, of like, you know, the big problem with an architect today is that since they don't build, they don't know what things cost. They don't necessarily know the best way to go about constructing something. And so they're lacking and they need um, help from mm -hmm. others to fill that hole. 
mm-hmm. and um, is to just have a collaborative approach and um, be aware of it. You know, be aware that the what the game, the, how the game is set up, how this industry is set up, it might not actually be um, the the right way. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, create a team that you know has a common goal, has a common purpose, and then um, you know, fill fill your deficits where you don't have it. You, like I'm not, I was never a great carpenter, mm-hmm. but I got some people that can do it. You know do that for me Mm -hmm. uh, really well and can fill that hole better than I ever could. Mm -hmm. Um, And in terms of like building a community and creating affluence and economic affluence, you know, having that um, kind of big picture view and knowing what all the components in play are Mm -hmm. instead of just like being like super focused on like, this is my job. This is what I got to do. You know, um, it actually helps to be able to have control and be able to like raise up uh, and 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 do more things because uh, and it, and again it does kind of always go back <laughs> to education mm-hmm. uh, but specifically in terms of um, you know building just this if you are in the, this industry I really encourage you to embrace the uh, design build I put out a lot of um, content on it i'm extremely passionate about it it is the future mm-hmm. and i and i'll put this to to you this way because inherently it's the future like i don't have to do anything i don't have to make anybody aware of it and it mm-hmm. will be the future mm-hmm. because as technology advances the like i said before the lines between design and execution start to blur like right mm-hmm. now you and i we can work in a rep, uh, building information modeling instead of AutoCAD where you're just yep. drawing lines. Now the computer like recognizes yes. components, yes. right? Now, pretty soon you're going to put that into, uh, you can even now like a 3D printer, it goes from computer to printer and you have a house. You can Google it and see pretty nice houses being built, built that way. From a you know, so printer, yeah. That, that is ri- like, where, where does the technology, it's just technology. Mm-hmm. And technology is going to continue to develop and um, those that have the the full view, the full gamut, and and know all the components, and are not just pretending um, to like fulfill a whole uh, fulfill. One, that's the real thing at, with the architectural community at this point. Is I feel like they used to be the master, they used to be the head, mm-hmm. but the, it's like a self inflicted gun wound yeah. that they have really lowered themselves um you know in the hierarchy and that is being replaced it was never replaced it was kind Mm -hmm. of pretended to still be them but it's not it's it's really the the person who's going to be fully accountable and responsible for you know creating the built environment Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it, it, man you're spot on though you're spot on the collaborative pieces and yeah. the collaborative yeah. you're you're spot on you you're know it's, on. it sounds it sounds so simple it sounds yeah. like too simple to be true yeah. but yeah. it's actually the truth it is because it like is. the thing of the thing about it has been made to appear so complex and and I think um, architecture school, you're almost trained to do that. Like, no, to, and you, know, you have you to talk, and present. Yes, yeah, you yeah. have to be intellectual. You have to be yes, so yes. sophisticated. Make it right. <laughs> yeah. But it's and, actually and, really simple. And if you really it's think about really, it, really simple. One thing that I've analyzed that architects low key create problems and then present yeah. solutions. So they don't, mm-hmm. it's not really that they're solving a problem. It's like, oh, here's a problem. And yeah. uh, nobody yeah. really like brought light to it, but then here's a solution instead of actually looking at so those solutions. So, yeah, it, it's a it's a it's an interesting yeah. field, but I enjoy it though because uh, the biggest piece for me is being able to create. It reminds me of the movie Inception. 
every architect probably had to watch it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. the movie Inception is how we design our world through our minds. And so I, I remember like being a kid and I would just daydream about what my world will look like in my mind. Just like, just being a random kid, you know, what I will, things that I like, diff, different things that I didn't like. And so I really enjoy the film. I think it's amazing, but it yeah. is changing. It is changing. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, um, it's powerful too. Like creating that aesthetic um, aspect of it, like that artistry is yeah. a huge component of mm -hmm. a successful project. Absolutely. And that's really what the architect has come to focus on as a designer. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not the only component. And so the, the others can't be neglected because mm -hmm. the thing don't get built unless you know it, it's 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 a real world and so um yeah and so you know that the architect today be it a black architect or a white architect is in a prime position today to you know reclaim um you know to be the master again and and um you know because of that because aesthetic artistry and and like creativity is so powerful but if mm -hmm. you can then take take that creativity and put it into the physical universe you know and get the funds to do it and get the do all the logistical work to do it you know now we're talking now we're like now we're really going to start creating some effects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's all it takes man hey dave yeah. where can people find you um on uh instagram the design build movement okay and um i put all my articles on my blog which is ne as in new england design build.com okay that's, that's ne that's design build.com awesome yes sir well david it's been a pleasure talking with you man um i look forward to having more conversations that's off off the uh, you know off zoom or podcast you know maybe that's just you know calling you and ask you a couple of questions um, yeah, please, man. I'll be I'll be tracking you. I'll be following oh, you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I look forward to more amazing things, man. I can't wait till your book come out. I would really love to um, read that and even all the articles that you compact together. So it's been a pleasure, man. Uh, if you've been tuning in, thank you guys for tuning in to the podcast. We're here with David. I'm out. Thank you, Joshua. Pleasure, my brother. <laughs>